Hey guys, um, I don't know if this is going to make it to my first channel video or not, but um, my name's John. This is my second channel for all my tech stuff, home stuff that we do here. It's a spinoff of my vlog channel that I have with my fiance, uh, Sarah, but I want to document how our house process is from, you know, when we bought the house to all the future improvements we'll do. And the, I guess that's kind of the idea I had for this channel. So today, I'm going to show you how I set up my 2.5 gigabit internet connection with AT&T. Alright, so this is all the stuff we're going to be working with today. As you can see, I have a TP-Link BE9300 Wi-Fi 7 router. I believe it came out towards the end of 2023. I have a 8 Ethernet port 2.5 gigabit Ethernet switch that I'm going to use to be wearing a lot of stuff and then the idea is that I also have a Mocha 2.5 gigabyte Ethernet adapter got two of these um, primarily because this house does did not come with Ethernet instead we just have the standard coax and some phone lines which are pretty much useless these days so the idea is that I'll use all my coax cables throughout the house um, because I don't have like satellite TV or anything that uses the coax so those can act as the ethernet cable instead of me having to pay for like you know really expensive um, ethernet installation it can get a little bit iffy especially in a townhouse community as well um, so I definitely want to try the solution first all right so on the outside we can see that the townhouse which was built in 2018 so it's not too old about five six years at this point of recording it already has AT&T fiber hardwired into the house all right and then on the inside we're in the living room right now the fiber box um, he actually just installed the new one and replaced the old one is actually this little skinny thing here so if you see this in a house this is the new AT&T fiber box and as you can see it's pretty convenient it's plugged in and the router they gave us was the BGW320 router. I believe this is the newer one um, that they give out to everyone as if spring 2024 at the time of this recording. And then to double check with the technician while he was here, I did the, so I did the speed test. And as you can see, it is 2.5 gigs. All right, one important thing to note guys is that even though I am getting 2.5 gig ethernet speed that doesn't equate to you know the same for wi-fi speed especially for my pixel 6 pro it's a few generations behind it's only getting this much but this is still really good for a mobile connection guys 700 up or 800 up 700 down that's pretty good but what we want to test is wired ethernet speeds all right unboxing the router as you can see here's the little bad boy and then in theory, yep, all of these are 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports. So this should all be compatible with the AT&T plan I have. Now what you want to be careful of is using the right Ethernet cable. I believe the one that comes in the box of the TP-Link router. This should be probably a Cat 7 or 8. You don't want to be using an older cable. So like this is a cable that the AT&T technician tested. Something also to notice is for the AT&T default modem that they give you, the technician pointed out that these are just normal Ethernet 1 gigs. You want to use the one 5 gig port down here. All right, so back, I made sure I got a Cat7 cable here. So it should be 2.5 gig to a 2.5 gig third-party router that I bought. But the thing is, when you test, you have to also make sure that whatever device you're testing is also capable of having a 2.5 gig Ethernet port. As you can see, this laptop, which is from 2020, it's an ROG Zephyrus, it probably maxes out at only one gig, because even the test says it's only getting 900 down and 800 up, which is still really good, but we want to test for 2.5 gig speeds. So I want to fast forward to when I have a device capable of testing this. All right, it has been some time. I ordered a Anchor USB-C to Ethernet, specifically 2.5 GBPS adapter. Just make sure that this is actually compatible with the speed that I have my AT&T fiber on. And as you can see, it's connected to the back of my router. And it's also 2.5 GBPS LAN compatible. 
All right, now let's run a speed test. All right, as you can see, it already broke past the thousands and we're about to hit 1800s, close to 2000s. But yeah, that's already a good sign that it's working. Oh, the upload already broke past 2000s. Getting close to that advertised limit. All right, as you can see with the adapter now, instead of doing the built-in ethernet on my laptop, which is limited to just 1000, you know, one gigabit, we now have the adapter, which is available to go up to 2.5 gigabit. And as you can see, it definitely broke it. So yeah, make sure you use a good adapter to test your ethernet connections. All right, I ran another test just on a different server. And as you can see, we're hitting 1.8, almost 1.9 gigabit internet and upload still at over two gigabit internet. So yeah, I can say with the right adapter or you know some newer laptops and desktop come with the built-in 2.5 gigabit ethernet. It works. Make sure you also have a Cat7 or Cat8 cable. This one I hear is Cat7. And make sure that it is plugged in to an equivalent port on your router or ethernet switch that's also 2.5 gigabit compatible. All right, hello, welcome back to our channel. This is gonna be part two of setting up my internet. Uh, specifically, this part's gonna be focused on the Go Coax 2.5 gigahertz adapter, which is gonna plug from my router straight to an ethernet plug splitter. And then it's gonna to go to my coax adapter into my wall, which is probably down there. So the idea is that since it's a little bit too hard for me to wire ethernet in my townhouse, I'm gonna use the coax cables in my house to connect for ethernet. And luckily, you know, I don't use DirecTV. I don't have like anything that will run on my coax cable. So in theory, this should be a good replacement for those who don't have the option, you know, to install ethernet in your house or whatever. For the setup, it's a little bit messy here because I'm still sitting in the house, but we have the AT&T fiber modem right here, which my fiber cable is literally just against my wall right here. So that's why I have it on top of the fireplace. And then I have this TP-Link Wi-Fi 7 router that I bought. It's capable of 2.5. I hope you guys can see that 2.5 gigabit internet through LAN. All four of these ports are capable of that. And I have the TP-Link 2.5 multi gigabit desktop switch which should mean it should feed the cable and the signal into eight different parts one of them which is going to be connected to one go coax adapter which i have connected and already plugged into the wall however i'm going to do a first test uh, which a lot of people recommend is actually connecting the two adapters together just to make sure you know you'll get that mocha signal um, that it lights up right here All right, as you can see I've just connected a direct coax cable from one adapter to the other and You can see the mocha light is on which means these two adapters out of the box should be able to talk to each other As long as your wiring uh, your coax wiring in your wall is actually hooked up to each other Now normally that's all you would typically have to do is just connect the two one to your router and then one to whatever room you have and you just plug in the adapter to your computer. However, there's one problem with my house. Um, this is a townhouse that was only built like five or six years ago, but I discovered in my broom closet here, hopefully you guys can see this, I'm shining a light. This is my electrical on cue box um, that came with the house. And like you guys can see, literally it's just the raw phone lines, which is the blue lines, and then the white lines, there's about uh, four or five of them. That's the coax cable, and they're all just cut. They're actually not wired to anything, uh, which, I mean, at this point in the video, you would probably hire an electrician to help you do this, but I found, and I figured, I'd probably just DIY this myself to connect my coax network in my house. So one of the things I found and I bought on Amazon was this Klein Tools coax installation and test kit. It's about 50, almost 60 bucks, but it comes with everything you need. Um, you have a stripper right here, you have a crimper, and they give you some coax 
uh, ends right here, as well as a neat little tester, uh, which I'm excited to use just to make sure you know you have a connection on both ends. And then how I'm gonna connect everything is I also got this splitter from Amazon as well. This was recommended specifically for Mocha. If you guys can see, it's Mocha 2.5 certified. It's a three-way splitter, and ideally I'm just gonna um, put in one of the coax cables and then connect the other three to my rooms upstairs. All right, so I already did it for four of my coax cables right here. As you can see, they have the ends stripped, and then I put on the end and I crimped it together. So I just have one more to go, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. All right, so you take your last coax cable. Hopefully, you guys can see this. As you can see, it hasn't been stripped yet. But all you gotta do take the little stripper tool put it in make sure it's all tight then you actually just spin it about four times four to six times and then do it the opposite way and then you just kind of pull it out and there we go you have this nice stripped cable now I'm gonna actually use an knife and just cut a little bit more just so it can it can be pronounced a bit more and you should be able to just twist it right off there we go a nice little coax exposed all right take one of the ends Stick the cable through, kind of like this. You can kind of see it poking out a bit. Then you take your crimper tool, kind of put it in place like that. Make sure it's nice and snug. And then you just gotta put some pressure Ooh, until you finally get all the way down. And then there you go. You have a nice coax cable stripped, put an end and crimped, and you're ready to roll with this. Now, they give you this little tester, which seems to work for like, you know, short coax cables, especially if you have the red end attached to it. Because when I turn this on now, as you can see, it passes the test. However, I'm not sure if this works if you're trying to detect a signal on the other side of the wall through a you know go coax adapter into a splitter so i'm just gonna say maybe this won't help you as much i didn't have any luck through any of the cables all right and now i have the splitter um through some trial and error i figured out that this cable was coming from the living room which is where my fiber and my router are and I think these three go to our bedroom, um, but there is a fourth cable. Now Amazon actually did send me the wrong splitter. I asked for a four-way splitter, they gave me a three-way, so I'll probably do a return and connect the last one. But I can confirm that this is now working. All right, so in theory, one of my coax adapters, go coax adapter, should be attached to the living room wall already. All right, and just to show that it's working, now you can see that we have the go coax adapter connected to my coax in the wall. And the mocha symbol actually is lighting up right here. And the ethernet connection is being sent through. All right, and just to double confirm, here's my other Go coax adapter upstairs in my bed master bedroom slash office. As you can see, the mocha light is equally lighting up here. And I've got to connect it to a, the same USB to 2.5 gigahertz adapter with a Cat8 cable. And now, let's give it a shot. Give it a speed test. All right, as you can see, it's already firing up. It's going upwards of two gigahertz internet, baby. This is amazing. This is like about three times the speed of my Wi-Fi 7 router. Yep, there we go. We broke 2K, two gigahertz. And the upload as well, there it's going. Yep, it's reaching about right under 2K as well. All right, beautiful results. So as you can see, the AT&T internet through my Go coax adapters is working as expected. All right, and all that's left is for me to clean up 
my on cue kind of networking box right here and there you have it i mean this was the go coax 2.5 gigahertz adapter i have the at&t fiber plan which is this router and i'm using my external third party router um, which has 2.5 gigahertz compatibility all the cables are cat 7 cat 8 that's really important make sure you have the right ethernet cables um, and yeah, it's all connected. I just got to tidy this all up and yeah, it'll be beautiful. I have my whole house pretty much wired with ethernet. If I wanted to put this in another room, I would simply just buy another adapter, plug in another coax and ethernet cable, and I should be good to go. Hello. All right. This is future John reporting in, um, actually on two different videos. One is going to be, um, uh, this is the final update for the, uh, AT&T 2.5 gigahertz internet video so i really like the coax adapters a lot i've been using it for uh, almost like seven to eight months now and decided to finally get another two for this is the guest room pc aka also sarah's pc and then also for the hobby room we have down the hall uh, just to wire up everything in the house to be on ethernet uh, so i'm going to install this now all right and just like that we have the Cox cable going into the adapter and up to this is Sarah's PC and voila we have advertised really good speeds uh, almost 2.5 gigahertz so yeah really pleased with this and I'm gonna do this to the hobby room as well pretty much been loving the ethernet it hasn't really dropped like more than maybe once in the entire almost full year that I've used the ethernet um, it's been really solid getting over well over two gigabit e Ethernet um, on my home computer as well as on the splitter downstairs um, with all my consoles. Sometimes I do have to tinker with the settings um, with the splitter, but that's only for the console specific ones. Uh, but otherwise, just for like a regular PC, like and as well as a laptop that can support up to 2.5 gigabit Internet, I haven't really had to tinker much with it. It pretty much works plug and play out of the box. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the AT&T Fiber um, review. This has been almost a year living with it and it's been really good. So if it's in your area, I would highly recommend it. If you have a house that only has coax and it doesn't have ethernet or it might be too hard for you to install ethernet, um, I recommend Go Coax. These things are really such a nice adapter, especially if you can get your house set up um, correctly with all your coax. So yeah, if you guys like these two videos, um, please continue to like, comment, subscribe for more. Uh, we also have a vlog channel um, that where we do vlogs. And yeah, I'm hoping to do a lot more home improvement and tech stuff on this channel. So yeah, stay tuned.